All right, welcome to another week of our online video demonstrations here for the Chem 1211 lab in North Georgia. Uh, I'm Dr. Meyer, and what we're going to be taking a look at today is the empirical formula experiment. Uh, and what we're going to do is kind of a general starting point for this is dealing a little bit with setup uh, as far as kind of how we're going to be using crucibles to do our reaction in to burn magnesium, uh, as well as setting up and using our Bunsen burners. Uh, so those are going to kind of be the first things that I do. Uh, but as a starting point, the very first thing I'll probably do is you're going to mass out your crucible. Uh, you notice it might look a little bit dirty. I've actually already gone and kind of cleaned it. Uh, you don't usually clean these crucibles with water. Use just a paper towel and just kind of wipe them out instead as best you can. Water and magnesium, if there is any kind of leftover magnesium in here, react pretty violently. So that's what we're trying to avoid by not using water. Uh, and really, we're going to perform kind of a quick check to make sure that these crucibles are ready to use for our reaction. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is I've already pre-massed this crucible. So I already have a mass of what this came out to. It was 15.141 grams. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to heat this crucible up, and I'm going to make sure it stays about the same mass. I don't want its mass to change. So I'm going to go ahead and take my crucible. And for this first part, I'm actually kind of not including the lid just yet, uh, because the lid shouldn't really have anything on it that's going to change with, with heat or anything else. So uh, I'll show what the heating setup looks like with the lid on it in a second. Uh, but that shouldn't have a big impact to that first mass that I just gave. Now, to get my Bunsen burner set up, a couple things here as I go to kind of connect everything. Uh, there's actually three different spigots on kind of our bench tops here in our labs. Uh, we have one that has kind of an orange little uh, kind of knob to it, one with a blue knob, one with a green knob. Uh, orange is going to be for air, blue is for natural gas, uh, and then the green is actually for water. Uh, why they chose green for water, not blue, I don't know. It's just kind of the, the convention that they have. And for us, we want, it's important that we make sure we hook up to the blue knob for our spigot, the one that has natural gas, because if we hook up to the other two, we're not going to get a flame. Hook up to the orange, which is just air. We're never going to get our Bunsen burner to ignite and get a flame. We're going to hook it up to our green and turn on the green spigot. We're going to get a very wet surprise, which we don't want either. So make sure we hook it up to our blue line, our blue knob spigot. And what we're going to do to get our Bunsen burner kind of turned on, we can turn on our gas line, which is the valve up here that I'm grabbing. We're basically just turning it so that the actual knob handle portion here is now in line with the spigot itself. You should be able to hear a slight hiss of the gas coming. And so now what I'm going to do is take a sparker right over where the gas is coming, spark it, and now I have a flame. So once I have my flame, we can control this a couple different ways. This flame that I currently have is probably much bigger than what I really need. So there's two, two areas or ways that you can kind of manipulate your Bunsen burner. One is at the very bottom, which is going to regulate the gas flow coming from our line. And the other is on top, which is going to regulate the airflow coming through as well. Uh, both are going to influence kind of the size and the color of the flame that you see. So for us right now, uh, I don't need a flame this big, so what I'm doing is actually turning down how much gas is coming through for our flame. Uh, I am going to want a decent sized flame, an intensity flame, to be able to heat up my crucible for my reaction eventually, uh, hot enough that I'm going to be able to burn magnesium. But for this first step, I'm just heating things. Uh, this flame that I have now should be probably good enough. I can, again, I can adjust the airflow if I want, adjust the size of that inner cone. And what I'm really looking at, if you can see this, I have kind of like a, a blue flame here that may or may not show up very well in video, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but the inner, there's kind of like an inner and outer flame. We want the inner flame to look kind of like an inverted blue cone, and we want the tip of that inside cone to be right up just beneath the bottom of our crucible. That's kind of the, how we want to get this set up, uh, kind of arranged. Before I just jam this flame though underneath my crucible, I am going to go ahead and kind of waft the flame underneath it a little bit first. Uh, the reason for this, this crucible is ceramic which means extreme temperature changes really quickly can potentially cause it to crack and break. So that's what I'm going to try to avoid. I'm going to actually kind of heat it up slowly. And now once this flame's been kind of wafted under it for a while, now I can go ahead and set my flame underneath it directly. And again, now is when I can adjust the cone of my flame. And I have two options. I can either adjust the size of my flame or I can lower my actual ring stand setup. Uh, for right now, I was able to get the cone of my flame just up beneath the bottom of my crucible. So this should be fine. I'm going to leave it here for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this heat for a couple minutes uh, until it gets hot. We want to see the bottom of our crucible kind of get to like a, almost a glowing red color. Uh, and what I'm trying to do right now is make sure that if I have anything in my crucible that might react while I would burn my magnesium or heat it up later, that it's hopefully reacting going away now. Um, because if I, what by heating this, if I go and remass my crucible again after heating and my mass is the same, then there's nothing left in the crucible, even though there looks like there's a bunch of junk on the bottom of it. There's nothing in there that's going to impact my experiment. And that means that I should be good to move on to my next step with the magnesium itself. Now, to show what our setup's going to look like here in a little bit, I'm uh, just going to get used to, we are going to use tongs. Like I said, I don't want to use, put my bare hands right above this really, really hot flame. We can put our, or use these tongs to kind of place our crucible cover kind of at an angle to where it almost fully covers 
Modern Crucible. That's how we're going to set it up for the actual reaction of magnesium there in just a little bit. Uh, but that's going to be kind of our general setup. And like I said, right now I'm just going to let this heat. Bottom of our crucible is starting to get pretty close to being kind of a bright, bright orange. I'm going to give this another 30 seconds or so. I'm going to shut the heat off. And then what I'm going to do is let it cool down. Uh, once it's cool, I'm going to take it over to our balance uh, where we can remass our crucible, make sure my mass didn't really change from the first time I did it, uh, and then we'll get our magnesium ready to add. That'll be our next step. Right? So I'll show that step once this thing's done heating. Like I said, at this point, pretty close to heating this already long enough, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here uh, and show you the next part where we get our masses. All right, so I went ahead and shut my Bunsen burner off. I let my crucible cool down close to room temperature. Uh, it's cool enough that if I wanted to, I could pick it up with my hand here, and I'll show you in a second. Uh, what I want to do now is just check the mass of my crucible compared to what it started out with. Uh, remember I said before on the last previous little clip uh, that I initially already masked it. It was at 15.141 grams. So now I'm going to double check and see kind of where it compares. And the only main reason I'm using tongs is not to like avoid the heat because it's, it's not really that hot anymore. It's more just at this point, I want to try to minimize how many, how much like fingerprint oil I get on things, uh, because that actually can potentially have an impact on our experiment. Um, so the less you handle things with your bare hands, probably the better. Uh, if you really want to be careful, you can wear things like gloves, uh, probably helpful here as well. Or in this case, I can just using tongs to kind of shuttle uh, my crucible back and forth. Uh, so when I look at my mass now, uh, actually it's kind of unfortunate, it comes out exactly 15.141 grams again. And the only thing I'm gonna change here is now I'm gonna include my, my crucible lid as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my, my lid that I've left over on the other side of my bench. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and take my lid and add here as well to the balance. How it sits shouldn't really matter. Mass should be the same either way. So looking here at my balance, I'm gonna close this up. And it looks like this is the first measurement you'll actually be asked to submit to CSE Pub. So you wanna write this one down. Uh, 29.258 grams. That's gonna be the mass of your crucible and the cover after it's dry. So that's kind of our first initial uh, measurement that we're kind of recording that we're gonna use for later calculations. Now, the next piece of this, and I'm gonna write this down actually myself here as well, since I have a notepad I'm kind of keeping everything on. And I'll kind of show at the end, kind of similar to what we did in the last lab. <clears throat> so mass 29.258. And now my next part here while I'm at the balance is I also want to figure out how much magnesium I'm going to use for my reaction. So I can go ahead and take these out. And like I said, mainly just using tongs here to avoid any fingerprint oils potentially contaminating things. And I kind of want to use the same idea. I'm going to go ahead and add a piece of weigh paper and balance and tear things. Because uh, I want to mask my magnesium ribbon. So the magnesium strip that I'm going to be burning for my reaction. So I have a strip of magnesium wire here. And if you look at this wire, it's fairly shiny. There might be a few kind of like black, almost tarnished spots to it. So if that any black tarnish could be magnesium oxide that's already formed. But remember, that's kind of our end goal of what we want to make in the reaction. We want this magnesium strip to really just be pure magnesium as much as possible. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my magnesium strip here, and I'm going to basically kind of wipe it and just kind of scratch it really good with the steel wool. And what the steel wool is doing is hopefully wiping off some of that magnesium oxide kind of coating that this magnesium strip had started to develop. So I think I, it's not, obviously not perfect still. There's still kind of some dull spots here where there, there might be a little magnesium oxide, but it's shinier than it was before. Uh, if it's really dull, you can scrub it more with the, uh, the steel wool. I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal here. Uh, I don't wanna hold this in my bare hand for too long. The same reason I mentioned before with the crucible. Just wanna kind of avoid the, the fingerprint oils if I can. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask my magnesium strip. And it should be somewhere, and kind of the lab says different things. Uh, I usually aim for somewhere like around maybe like 0.1 grams to 0.2 grams. Um, the smaller the wire, or smaller the strip, a lot of times the easier this reaction works. Uh, just because you have a smaller wire, it burns a little more efficiently. If the wire gets too big, sometimes it's hard to get all of it to burn efficiently, uh, and that kind of throws off some of our measurements in this lab. So this strip, uh, it's actually just below uh, one, or 0.1 grams. So it's 0 0.099 grams for magnesium ribbon. So I'm gonna go ahead and record that. It's the mass of magnesium ribbon for this first trial. And now what I wanna do, I do wanna go ahead and put this magnesium ribbon into my crucible. But when I do that, this magnesium ribbon, if I just grab this quickly, I can't just go ahead and do this quickly and I, I am gonna use my bare hands here for a minute. can't just put the ribbon straight down in like this, right? If I'm looking at it here, that wire is not sitting down at the bottom of the crucible. It's never going to burn efficiently. 
So in order to get this wire to burn efficiently, what we're actually gonna do, I am gonna go ahead and kind of pick this wire up for a second, and I'll kind of wipe it back down just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and coil the wire. And I don't want it into like a little itty bitty tiny ball, but what I want is just kind of a, a coiling that's gonna let this wire sit relatively flat at the bottom of my crucible. So there I have, it's not the best coiling in the world, but I have my wire kind of in a coil shape. So that now if I actually take and set it down in the bottom of my crucible, it'll sit flat on the bottom. That's gonna be the most effective way to get the full wire to burn and burn at least reasonably quickly. If you don't have all of your wire sitting down flat kind of towards the bottom of your crucible, it's gonna take forever for the whole magnesium wire or strip to really kind of ignite and burn all the way through. And you're just gonna be sitting there waiting forever for your wire to burn, and it may not ever burn all the way through properly, and then you won't get very good data at the end of it. So that's the setup there. Uh, I have my wire down sitting at the bottom. I'm gonna take kind of a, a quick wipe again, just of where I've kind of handled this thing uh, with my bare hands. So kind of wipe down some of the edges. Just trying to minimize the fingerprint oils as much as I can. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my crucible back over to our Bunsen burner, and now I'm gonna go ahead and ignite my wire and start my reaction. So that'll be our next clip. Uh, I'll actually show the setup again. Again, using the Bunsen burner, uh, and we'll get it heating, and then we'll take a look at kind of what the wire is supposed to look like or should look like as the reactions go. All right, so I've gone ahead and moved my crucible back over to the setup I had before. Uh, I have my magnesium strip down at the bottom of my crucible, ready to get heated. Uh, I've actually already gone ahead and put the lid there. Uh, and the reason I've kind of done this and set this up already is because I've already used this Bunsen burner, and if you've shut it off properly the first time, I apologize for the ice machine in the background. If you shut your Bunsen burner off properly, which is just by turning off the gas at the nozzle, uh, then when I basically start this Bunsen burner back up, the flame should be about the same size. I shouldn't really have to adjust anything here, which is why I've gone ahead and set it up already. So if I go ahead and turn my gas back on, you should be able to hear that little bit of a hiss. Have the gas go through. I take my striker, strike right above the Bunsen burner, have my flame. I am going to go ahead and walk underneath the crucible again, because remember I don't want my crucible to break if I can avoid it as I do the reaction. <laughs> and so I'm going to walk here for a little bit. Then I'm going to put my flame underneath. And again, what you want to look for is going to be the inner blue flame of your Bunsen burner flame, uh, that inner blue cone in particular. You want the tip of it right up, just kind of barely beneath the cup, uh, sorry, the, the bottom of your crucible. Uh, because if it's farther away than that, your crucible is probably not going to get hot enough to really burn the magnesium effectively. And if it's uh, basically up too far into the crucible itself, you might overheat it, uh, and you might see some white flashing light. Uh, coming out from your crucible, and then in that case you're reacting to the magnesium a little bit too violently, uh, in which case you're going to get some things that you don't want. Uh, you're actually going to get some kind of almost like a smoky magnesium oxide powder being given off and the reaction going a little too quickly. Uh, and so we'll keep an eye out for that, hopefully we don't have to worry about it. Uh, but in this case, again, I have my crucible bottom right near the tip of that blue flame. I'm actually going to kind of increase my flame size just a touch there, so that I have that uh, crucible cover and the tip of my blue cone almost touching maybe the tiniest of gaps between. And now I'm just gonna kind of wait. I'm gonna heat this sample up. Uh, what we should see, and notice I've kind of left my crucible cover, a little hot there, uh, cracked there, uh, <clears throat> so that I can see inside. Because now if I come up from the side and look down, I should be able to see my magnesium strip start to glow orange when it's burning. And you can always, as the reaction is going, if you're not sure, like is it, is it done yet, or where am I at, you can kind of lift the crucible cover off. Or you, and it, one of the things I would suggest, if you let, kind of open the cover a little bit more, it's going to let more air in, the reaction will actually end up going faster. If you start to see a little bit of smoke form, or if you see kind of a really bright white light, completely cover the sample and take the Bunsen burner out from underneath and let it cool back down a little bit again. Uh, we don't want it to react too quickly. Like I said, it's going to create kind of almost magnesium oxide smoke that will kind of come off in the air. And you're, not only do you not want to breathe it, but you're also losing the product. Um, so that's what we're trying to avoid so we have hopefully good data, but also practicing some good safety in the process as well. So I'm looking in here uh, towards the bottom of the crucible. Uh, the bottom of the crucible is starting to kind of glow a little bit to an orange color. You can already see the, the triangle holding the crucible in place has kind of some, some orange to it as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pause the video here, but I'm going to kind of shift its viewpoint so that you can hopefully get a better, a better look at uh, what's going on with the crucible, what it looks like, and what we're hoping to see out of our magnesium strip to know when we're done with this first burning step. All right, so what I wanted to give is kind of a different view here, so a little bit more from the top side as well. Uh, but what you see here is I have my crucible still burning, uh, and down on the inside I have it kind of cracked. And the way the directions kind of have you do it is you basically kind of cycle through. You can go ahead and kind of cover it fully, <coughs> uh, heat it for a little while, then open it so that air can be pulled in to react with. 
and you kind of go back and forth between the two, uh, trying to avoid kind of having things react too quickly like I was describing before and avoid any kind of white smoke or things like that. And we repeat this process a few times. And then the big thing here is trying to know like when are we actually done heating. So remember the magnesium strip itself was kind of a bright shiny silvery color initially. What we want to look for is this reaction should be pretty much done or this step of the reaction should be done if what we have now is fairly powdery and crumbly and if it's more like a white gray color instead of kind of that bright silver. So that's kind of what we're looking for here. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually shut my flame off because it's been heating, should have been plenty long at this point for my reaction to have taken place. I'm going to move my Bunsen burner. And what I'm going to do here is if I take away my lid, looks down at the inside of here, pretty much everything's kind of like a white crusty look to it, right? There's no more kind of like real defined um, metal strip anymore. And if I were to take and actually, and one of the other ways I'll have people often check, uh, you can actually take like a little like glass string rod or something if you want, if you're really careful not to get stuff stuck to the string rod and kind of, you know, just kind of poke at it and make sure it just kind of crumbles. I'm not going to do that here. It looks like things have uh, reacted fairly well at this point, so I'm not going to continuously react more. Uh, I think uh, our wire is pretty, pretty fully kind of burnt through at this point, uh, and so I'm ready to move to the next step. Now, for the next step, though, before I go on to that, uh, what I'm going to have to do is I'm actually going to have to add water, a few drops of water, because remember, at this point, what I have isn't just magnesium oxide. Um, it's probably magnesium oxide and magnesium nitride mixed because there's also nitrogen in the air, just like there's oxygen. In fact, there's more nitrogen. Uh, and so to make sure I only have magnesium oxide as a final product, I'm gonna add a little bit of water and heat this back up again. But I do have to wait a little bit before I can do that because it's really, really hot right now. And if I add the water, that water is just uh, basically instantly gonna evaporate and it's not gonna react. So I'm gonna wait and let this cool back down. Again, it doesn't have to get all the way to room temperature, uh, but I'm gonna let it get cool enough where the water's not gonna evaporate right away. Then I'm gonna add a few drops of water, uh, which will be the next clip that I show is kind of adding a few drops of water, flashing the heat again for a minute or so, uh, and then we'll go ahead and that'll be the, the end of really the reaction for this step, and I'll just be waiting to cool down to get a final mass. All right, so apologize if there's a little bit of unsteadiness in the camera, but I want to give a little bit better top view, uh, looking down our magnesium ribbon in there. Um, as you can tell, it's not really kind of that nice uh, thin wire shape anymore. It's kind of like falling apart a little bit. Uh, it's all kind of white and gray and crusty. Uh, that's good. It means everything's kind of burned the way we want it to. And now what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of water. So I'm going to add just, a, like, I think the procedure calls for about six to eight drops uh, of water here. And so I'm going to go ahead and add those drops. Looks like my sample's maybe still a little bit hot. But you can see the water's not evaporating right away, so... more all right should be plenty of water and now what i'm going to do sorry that, that the camera now what i'm going to go ahead and do is heat this back up again so i'm going to show that sa basically the same exact heating step that i did before uh, and so i'm going to go ahead and set this up uh, from the other angle that i had things at a second ago uh, and then we'll go ahead and look at the very end of this all right so my last steps now i'm going to go ahead and turn my bunsen burner back on one last time i'm going to go ahead and put my, my crucible lid back up here again we don't really need the air access anymore. We really just want to heat this out. Uh, there is enough uh, for the water to get out. Right, let's get my Bunsen burner lit back up. Again, a little bit of wafting here just to avoid unnecessary stress on the crucible itself that might cause it to break. And then we're going to heat this for about two minutes and then let it cool down. And once it's room temperature, we're going to go take a mass. So I'm going to get this started heating. Uh, and then rather than just make you guys stand there and watch this thing heat for two minutes, I'm going to cut the video and I'll probably pick it back up when I'm getting the final mass once things have cooled down. Uh, just to kind of save you guys some downtime of really just kind of sitting around. Uh, and then we'll go over kind of our final measurements and I'll probably just include both trials worth of data uh, in the data set at that point. All right, so at this point I've had a chance to let our sample cool down. I'm gonna give you guys kind of a, a quick peek here at the inside contents. Uh, again, like a pretty, pretty nice white, little bit of grayish to it. Uh, it looks like it's fairly powdery. Um, we haven't quite crumbled the wire entirely. That's fairly normal unless you actually poke at it, but I try to avoid that if I don't have to, uh, simply because if you have to use something to poke at it, probably some of that product will stick to whatever you poke at it with. Uh, if you're using like a glass stirring rod, for instance. Um, so you could lose some product, which might affect your masses. Uh, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna go ahead and get a final mass of everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my a crucible along with its cover in here to get a final mass. And it looks like I have a final mass. I'm going to pin some here. 
uh, 29.417 grams, um, which looks like it should be about a good range as far as how much it's gone up. Um, so I do expect these results to be pretty decent. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do here in just a second, I'm gonna kinda show uh, the full uh, data from trials one and two, uh, so that you guys have data for both trials to put in CSE Pub. Uh, and in terms of a couple things here, like sig figs, I know the lab, I, I realized after I masked out our first strip that was 0 0.099 grams, it says, well, keep, keep three decimals for sig figs. Um, it's okay that it was less than 0.1. Uh, the sig figs are actually gonna work out kind of regardless. Uh, CC Pub just wants things to certain decimal places. So numbers there should still be fine even at 0 .0, uh, or 0 0.099 grams for that first sample. Um, but again, uh, 29.417 is what I got here for the, the mass. Uh, I'm gonna write that down, show you guys all of our data, and then kind of explain what you'll be doing for some of the calculations, uh, and that'll be it for this week's lab. All right, and so here's all of our final data for everything that we have for both trials one and two. I still have our actual in sample here that we see for trial one that I'll kind of demonstrate in a second what you'll typically do to actually clean things out. Uh, but for each of these, you're going to see that there's uh, a mass of our crucible and cover after we dried things, a mass of magnesium ribbon by itself, the crucible cover and ma uh, product mass, uh, those are the only three actual measured values you should need uh, for each trial. Everything else on CSE Pub should be calculations using this data. So for instance, you can figure out what our mass of the product by itself is by taking this mass, basically subtracting out what our starting crucible was. Now you have a mass of product. And if you subtract the mass of magnesium from the net mass of our product, you can actually find the mass of oxygen by itself. And then if you have masses for magnesium and oxygen, you can convert to moles. And now you have the mole ratios that you want for your empirical formula. Uh, and so that's pretty much, like I said, all the data and everything that we should need. My last couple notes on this lab uh, deal mainly with cleanup things uh, that, again, you're not doing the lab in person, uh, but things to always kind of keep in mind. Uh, we said before, magnesium reacts really badly with water. So cleaning these things out, like the magnesium oxide product can actually just go in the trash. Uh, but you do want to kind of wipe these out with a paper towel, not with water as you're cleaning them, just in case there is any unreacted magnesium then that uh, might end up reacting with uh, the water that you try to add to clean it out. So just wiping them down, wiping them out, usually good enough for these crucibles. Uh, and if these things break, it's not that big a deal. Uh, crucibles, because we're heating them up constantly, like up and down, the bottoms of these things will actually kind of deteriorate and eventually crack over time anyway. This one's still in pretty good shape. Uh, but after about six or seven uses, a lot of these crucibles end up breaking anyway. So uh, it's normal to see these things kind of crumble and break uh, over time. Uh, but we try to take care of them as best we can. So avoid the water, wipe them out, just uh, paper towel. All the waste can just go in the trash. No special waste for the magnesium oxide itself. Uh, and that should pretty much cover it. For